quite the crabby clone. Here's your look at the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mirage Comics Claw Shredder Loot Crate Exclusive. Claw Shredder, also known as Spike Arm Shredder or Mutant Crab Shredder, was a mutant shredder clone who had large, monstrous, crustacean-like claws. We're going to get down to looking at Claw Shredder in a pinch. First, though, let's figure out how tall the figure stands. I've got my trusty tape measure here. Now, keeping in mind, Claw Shredder was only available as a Loot Crate exclusive. So the only way that you could get your own claws on him was to subscribe to the Loot Crate TMNT service. The boxes were quite delayed. And finally, the figure now is in hand. It's actually a good-looking figure. Claw Shredder stands 6 inches in height. And that works out to be a figure that's about 15 centimeters tall. Then to free up a little bit of space next to Claw Shredder, we're going to bring in one of the Mirage NECA Turtles. At some point, I do hope that the company gets around to re-releasing these figures because they're going for crazy stupid money online. But this was actually Leonardo, even though all the headband on the Turtles from at least the Mirage would have been all in red. But at least it gives you an idea of how tall he stacks up with Claw Shredder, just putting them back to back. It'd be safe to say that Leonardo in this case goes to about the shoulders of Claw Shredder. So it is nice at least that Shredder not only is a leaner looking figure, but he's a lot taller than the Turtles as well. Turning Shredder though back around, the figure comes included with no accessories to speak of. I don't think it even the case when we had a look at Danny. Danny was also one of the other Loot Crate exclusive TMNT figures. I did do the review of that if you guys did want to check that out. Actually, I think Danny did come include with his tape deck, so he is one up at least from Claw Shredder. I gotta say though that Claw Shredder has a lot more of a presence going for him. Now he's originally based on the Mirage run of Turtles, in which this is actually a clone of Shredder. It's not the real Shredder. He did actually also appear in several of the cartoons later. He appeared in the 2003 TMNT as the spiked arm Shredder, and then later followed that up in a 2012 release in the Turtles when he was a Claw Shredder in that as well. The figure also did get a couple of releases also from Playmates, released in 2004 as a Claw Shredder, released in 2015 as a Mutant Shredder, before finally we get this one released by NECA in 2022. Picking the figure up right now, I can tell you a lot of the weight, as you probably could imagine, is already in the claw sections of Shredder. That makes for a lot more of a heavier figure, at least in the arms, and it does seem to also make his joints in the elbows sadly a little bit more looser. I'm going to talk more about that more in a second. Head sculpt, though, is really nice looking Shredder. Classic design of the Mirage comic Shredder. Of course, this one does have notably the much longer looking helmet. And even the face plate, the guard that covers over his mouth, is a lot more longer as well. I do actually like the way they've added all the little scratch, the painted in a little markings here. Panel lining it nicely, really make it look like it's replicated from the pages of the Mirage comics. I do like the way they've also darkened the areas of his face. It allows the darker, more kind of blood red eyes to peer their way through again it's a really really neat looking helmet the helmet is obviously not removable it's all molded to the rest of his face so even if any bit of movement you're only just going to be moving the articulation point in the head the articulation on the head is actually pretty good we're going to talk more again about that in a second just to spin it around so you guys can see the panel lining on all these figures is always really good NECA really goes above and beyond when it comes to not only the animated turtles but the very few and far between mutant mirage turtles they've actually done a pretty good job of actually panel lining those figures as well uh, you got these spiked shoulders here on the side. I was actually surprised to see that the plastic that they used for the shoulders wasn't a soft plastic. In fact, it's actually very much very rigid plastic. Even the spikes on the top aren't soft at all. They're not pricked to the point where you're going to be drawing blood, at least not at least on my hands. But it does seem like the blades that they've used, there's only a few of them actually a little bit more softer, but they seem really, really hard plastic that they've ended up using. The tunic for Shredder, as well as his lower legs, is a really nice dark burgundy color. And then, of course, you've got the panel lining added in there as well, just to add the natural draping that would form on his costuming. And just to spin the figure around, he's just as nicely finished as he is on the back as he was to the front. Again, with some really nice solid lines added in there in black. I always love the idea that they add these things to it. I mean, just to mold the figure alone would have been good, but by adding all the characteristic charm of adding these little lines in it, again, it really looks like the, the shredder here is pulled right from the pages. Now, when we talk about the gloves, these big giant oven mitt spiked hands that he has, the plastic seems pretty heavy, but it also doesn't feel like it's solid plastic. It could simply just be the fact that the, the claw that they've sculpted here is small enough that it doesn't have a lot of real solid weight to it. 
but you definitely do notice the weight, especially when you're moving the elbows, which again, we'll talk more about more in the articulation side of the review. I've already noticed that taking the figure out and having it for the few moments that I've had it, the elbows seem already loose. And you can see by me just going like this with the claw, how those elbows don't seem to be strong enough to keep the... Now, you can obviously bend the elbow a lot better, but just again, to move the claw, you can see how loose those elbows have already developed. I don't know if this is a case where I'm displaying claw shredder, if I would always want to have his arms out like this. I think one thing that you're probably going to be causing problems with, wreaking havoc with, is the joints that he has in his arms. Again, nice sculpting though. Kind of looks like big giant, giant tree trunks with big protruding spikes. The colors of the spikes are more of a cream color. And again, they've added the additional panel lining into that as well. Really super detailed on this figure. And when we get a little bit lower down, not only does he have the brown that matches the colors of his of his big spiked hands, but he also does have the brown also added into his boots as well, which gives more of the opportunity on NECA's part just to again, add these straps, these little strips of fabric wrapping around his boots molded this way but panel lined in such a way that it actually does look like it's just wrapped been wrapped around his boots the figure does have peg holes strangely though at the front of his feet and not at the back i'm wondering why they didn't actually put the pegs on the back of the feet other than maybe just adding more stability because he's got so much weight moving more forward with the claws in his hands for the articulation here for claw shredder the head sculpt is on a ball joint so it's going to rotate all the way around he does seem to have two points of articulation, actually. He has one just underneath the mouth plate that does allow the head move back and forth this way. But I don't know if you can actually see it as well. Tucked inside the tunic, there's actually a secondary joint for the, for the actual neck. But it only just gives a little bit more extra mileage. I mean, if you just a look at that, I don't think it's really a lot in there. I mean, it seems like it didn't really even need to be the case. But I guess, to be fair, it does allow him to have a lo lower looking look uh, when it comes to certainly bringing his head up. That's as far back as you can really get Claw Shredder to be. Just again, some nice dark coloring on the underside of that. Really, again, like they, I like that they keep a lot of the mystery intact here for Shredder, whether he be a clone or not. For the shoulders, now the shoulders are tight on this figure. I'm going to even have to soften this up with a little bit of hot water, I think, or a hair dryer. There's the joints right there. It allows the arms to rotate back and forth this way. But moving the arms out, even the, the amount of time that I've actually had the figure out for, just really super tight, and I really don't want to break this figure, especially for how rare it's going to be. The figure does have, again, double hinges on the elbows. There's a joint right there, and a little bit further down from that, closer to the claws, he does have a double joint on the system. But again, just haven't had the figure out very long at all, and you can already see, like, just the one side, how loose those elbows are. Uh, you could, again, solve the problem by having maybe, like, the elbows extended out like this, and having the figure with the arms out probably going to be adding a little less stress, wear and tear to those elbow joints. Again, you can bring the elbows out, and the figure seems to sustain himself pretty good when it comes to standing. It's not like he's going to be falling front. Even though he kind of leans a little bit, he has yet to really fall forward for me. And I think a lot of that has to do with the size of the boots that they've given him. The legs split out. Again, they are on ball joints. You can see the joints inside the intersections of the thighs. But again, very loose, very loose. You can move the forward back on the legs, the lower skirting, by the way, on the tunic. While this is all hard plastic, knock, knock, who's there? The bottom half of him actually is all soft plastic. The, the sides of the skirting here, and then the actual main skirting is all soft plastic to conceal the joints and still allow the legs as much liberties, luxuries as it has. Legs again go forward, they go back. The figure has a double hinge on the knee. There is no articulation, even though it may look right now like he actually does have a swivel. This has actually just been painted in, so there's no articulation there. The figures do, the figure feet do move forward and back, but there's again not a lot of mileage to work with. But the figure at least has, to its credit, an ankle pivot. Really nice looking figure. I mean, the the availability on a character like Claw Shredder is, of course, going to be a little bit harder to come by. If you were lucky enough to subscribe to the Loot Crate TMNT subscription box. He is, of course, one of the exclusives to that subscription service. Granted, though, we had to wait a whole long time before we actually finally got ourselves another box. I think the first time we had a look at the Danny, which was the exclusive NECA figure at the time for that first subscription box from Loot Crate, that was well into last year. And now we're only finally getting the second box arriving from Loot Crate. It has been considerably delayed. That's a bit of an understatement. But the, I don't want to say it was worth the wait because we really shouldn't have had to wait as long as we did. But it does make for a nice looking Shredder figure. Whether we are going to be eventually getting this Shredder as a standalone retail release or maybe as a comic book convention exclusive, 
maybe in a different color scheme. I don't really know. Maybe they could even have done this guy in a different black and white color scheme. Time will certainly tell, but for the time being, as of right now, to capture this as a time moment, the only way to get this figure is again that Loot Crate exclusive, or you could also go online and probably pay the aftermarket prices that scalpers are selling Shredder for. But again, that's going to be going for some crazy, stupid money. If you really want to get the figure and you don't mind spending the crazy, stupid money, I say all for it. But I would certainly say try to hold off. Maybe at some point, Neka may decide to re-release this figure, this mold, in a different color scheme. Fingers crossed. Actually, let me cut myself off before we head on over to final looks. One other thing I did want to show you guys about Claw Shredder was the packaging he came included with. And we sort of got a bit of a gander of that at the beginning of this video. I'm just going to spin this around because the packaging is just too cool. But one thing that's neat about also the packaging is you can open it up. And inside is a cityscape pulled from the pages of Mirage Comics. Now, again, it doesn't have to necessarily be. I'll just put Shredder right there. Open this up just a little bit so you guys can see what this looks like. Yeah, some buildings nicely done on the side. A middle section orange building there also been painted in that you could use for Shredder. Or, hey, why not, too? Even though it's not probably going to be able to fit all the four turtles, at least you could take one of the turtles and certainly display it that way. Okay, let's head on over the rotisserie. A clone or not, Claw Shredder is still an interesting-looking design. The figure, of course, many of you probably may recognize more from the 2003 TMNT cartoon, which the Claw Shredder did make an appearance in. His colors came, of course, he didn't have the red tunic. His colors were closer to that gray of the original Shredder from that series. And again, there were several also Playmates versions of that Mutant Shredder that came out a little bit later. One in 2004 is a regular just called Claw Shredder. And then the one that was released in 2015 was called Mutant Shredders, pluralizing more than one. This one I like because it's actually based more on the Mirage comic run of, Sh of Shredder. So therefore, not only is his tunic going to be a different color, instead of having the pur purple, it's more that traditional Mirage comics burgundy. And I got to say, it works quite well with the brown that they've used, not only the wrappings of his boots, the wrapped sash there, the belt area, the neck area, and of course, the main obvious drawing point is the claws that he has in his hands. Now, the figure, again, has already mentioned in this review, the figure does have a lot of weight in those hands. You almost, you can see just gauging by looking at this figure how heavy those claws will be. And I'm, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm assuming that they're probably using a solid plastic. They're probably not likely molding that in a hollow plastic. It's going to be the same amount anyways, well, same mold size anyways. Why not just mold it all in a solid plastic anyways? But the figure does have, again, some dis difficult time I've already started to see here in his elbow joints. The pose that I've got him currently going here in Final Looks is probably not going to be the pose I'm going to be putting him in. Not only is it going to be wreaking havoc on his knees, but I think it's going to be adding a lot more of looseness to his his elbows, which he already does have the moment I took him out of the packaging. Other than having a little bit of looseness when it came to his articulation, I really love the look of Claw Shredder here. And again, I can only hope at some point NECA plans to re-release this figure at some point for those that didn't get the chance to get the Loot Crate subscription service because it came, it went, and of course the people that have subscribed to the service are now still waiting for our boxes to arrive. The new box of Loot Crate has finally arrived. In fact, I actually just do an, did do an unboxing not too long ago here on this channel if you guys did want to check out the other contents that were inside of that said box. But nice looking claw shredder though. I like the detailing, the coloring on this guy. Good. Very much traditionally a mirage looking shredder. Just a little bit off. Just a little bit off. What do you guys think though of claw shredder? Let me know down below in the comment section. And let me know also if you had the chance to get the Loot Crate subscription TMNT subscription box when it was around. And let me know what you guys think of the service if you have been getting those boxes. I think we already we have now two of the boxes, and I think we even had skipped over one of the middle boxes. And th I think Claw Shredder was actually part of box three or even box four. We missed completely box two. So I'm hoping at some point we are going to be getting box two from Lucre, but not worth the wait. But it was definitely a nice looking figure to finally, finally get in hand. Uh, again, today we were having a look at the Loot Crate exclusive Mirage Claw Shredder. If you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like if you're loving the content and certainly want to stick around for more, then hit the subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you're going to get reminders every single time a new video pops up. And while we have wrapped up at least things for Mirage Country right now, I'm pretty sure we are going to be looking at more NECA TMNT figures in the not so distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.